you know, this is where you need it. Travis have uh, on, on the very bottom, all opinions from tonight's podcast are strictly biased. Uh, they are not factual. Um, you're going to hear it from my point of view. This is sure. under the certain yeah. window. It doesn't count, right? Like it's so close to the race still that we can just. Yeah. You know what? Actually, <laughs> when I got my fine last year from the Phoenix thing, they said it's because, you know, your podcast was the next day. You had a, you know, people admit wrecking others. It's, it's okay in the moment. Yeah, we started it this was on the same night. night. <laughs> we're good. So we're good. So, so no bleeps, no nothing. Let's just, let's just get into this. The following is a production of Dirty Mo Media. Hey guys, welcome to Action's Detrimental Post Bristol a few hours ago. Boy, what did we just see? Uh, we see a trophy. Yeah, I got a boo-boo on my finger too. Sword's real. I did <laughs> the sword is real. Yeah, we got a dub. Let's go. Two in a row at Bristol. Uh, for us in the eleven car, I am Denny Hamlin, driver of that eleven and co owner twenty three eleven. For Bo Walsh, Tyler Reddick, my steam co-host, Mr. Jared Allen, Red Vest uh, 311. That just doesn't even sound right anymore, <laughs> right? Well, I th- I I got asked to sign a couple autographs today, and I put like 560 under, and they had said like, oh, what you, why are you putting 560? I was like, well, I don't know. I thought that was the, I thought that was the, you know, what I was going by. It's like MJ wearing 45. It right, just, right, right. So uh, speaking of autographs, Jared, I saw someone tweet. Uh, you don't carry sharpies? No, 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 no. You gotta, you gotta fix that. Mm. I mean, do you pretty much get asked for an I, autograph every week now? No, no, no. Definitely. Jared, maybe one. Okay. Huh. I mean, where do we start? I mean, we have a list here, but where do we start, Jared? J- Travis is like, well, how, how do you want this episode to go? I, I said, <laughs> let's just turn these mics on and start figuring it out. It's <laughs> just like the race. We're just going to figure this shit out on the fly. So do you want to get into the, I mean, the truck race? I think you got to do yeah. the, spring, the spring cleaning. You got to just, we got to right. knock these out. We gotta okay. knock that Even though out. we're super excited to talk about what we just saw in the cup race, we, we, we got to do. Yeah, we're we, not going to do it stop. at the end. We're we, not going to do it at the end. So we we got to get our now. commercial buys in now, right? Exactly. Okay. We want right. to go commercial free <laughs> at the end of this race, <laughs> yeah. at the end of this podcast. All right. That's up the dirty mode to figure out. All right. Uh, so the truck race, we had no Xfinity truck race. Christian Eckes won. Um, I don't think there was any big shocker there, uh, considering the speed that he had last year in that race. He didn't win for different reasons, but he held off one of the best in Kyle Busch. Um, you know, there at the end, Kyle was making a hell of a charge on him for sure. But, you know, between Christian and that truck, they just looked phenomenal all weekend, and they just dominated. So I don't know how much more you can say to that other than they got the race win that they probably should have had um, in the fall of last year. Yeah, it's got to feel good, though, if you're Christian Eckes to beat Kyle Busch. Yeah. Kyle's on a bit of a cold streak, and he's letting those young fellers um, whip up on him. Yeah, he even said, yeah, this is just – just not not getting the results I used to get. I gotta figure this thing out. You know, so it can go two ways. You know, we always back in the day when Kyle would run all these Xfinity races, you know, this is when Gibbs cars and Xfinity it's still really good, right? But it they were just really head and shoulders above the competition. Uh he would always run all those Xfinity races and and you know, what it, what is that for? And He's just like, ah, just big, you know, big confidence boost, right? He just keeps that, keeps that confidence up that he's a winner. And um, so it can go two ways. When you go down to the lower series and you don't win, then it's like, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe I need to work on some things, get a little better here and there. But I think he's had some truck troubles. I, I, I talked to him during driver intros and he said uh, he's just had some bad handling trucks over the last few weeks but still good enough to compete for wins just not actually get them yeah well a little bit's changed for him right like the trucks have changed a little bit now that he's not he doesn't have kbm anymore i would imagine or it's all the same 
Yeah, I, I think um, I think it's a lot of the same guys. I think it's very similar to when Justin Marks bought Chip Ganassi. It was pretty much most of the employees stayed there and uh, was part of the new transition. So I think it's uh, a lot of the same guys. I'm sure there's some new ones in there as well. Shout out to Kyle, though. That 20 minutes he did with Pat McAfee this week was very funny. You know what I thought was funnier? His hair, he kind of had a something <laughs> about Mary hair. <laughs> he did. You know when she put the um, hair gel in? Yeah. <laughs> I had some of those vibes. You, you had, Jared's looking it up. Looking you, when it you up. see it, wait. You, have when you, never, you see it, you'll no, see no, it. No, I've never seen this movie. What? No, no, no. Wait a minute. No, I've never seen the movie. <laughs> oh no! You never seen no. something about Mary? No, no. <laughs> How old are yeah. you, Jared? Twenty nine. Ah, oh, it's disappointing. Yeah, I think that's your homework for the week. Yeah. Anyway, just look up. I see it. Something about Mary Hair. I see it. And then it's it's a it's, it's cool. It was a bad angle. It just it was too the camera was too low for Kyle. But I thought he did, listen. I thought Kyle did a great job on um, on the show uh, representing the NASCAR brand. They were talking a little smack about Formula One <laughs> and some other stuff. But uh, it was cool to see some NASCAR presence on on that show. We had some beef in the truck race. We did. Uh, Nick Sanchez and Stuart Friesen. Um, I'm a Stuart Friesen fan. I, I like Stuart Friesen. I do. I, I think he's in the wrong here, though. Um, just because I thought uh, I thought Sanchez had said a great point, and that was that we crashed because I was there. Like, if I wasn't there, then we don't crash. But I'm there, Stuart. So... You know, and so I think Nicholas said what he needed to say, and that was, "Hey, I, I was on the outside. I had got to run off the top. It's up to it, you know. A lot of that too is you don't know kind of the spotter situation is. Are they on? Uh, the spotters really got to be on top of it at Bristol. When someone is running a higher line, they're going to get a massive run off the corner. And if you're running the low line, it's up to your spotter to tell you." Hey, this person's, you know, they're running the top, coming with a big run, leave room. Like, you know, because if you choose to shut that off, then they're, you're, you're telling the top guy, you must hit the brakes or run in the back of me because I'm just going to come on up. But Nick already established that he was beside Stewart, I thought. I mean, as a driver, I'm thinking, well, that's clearly Stewart Friesen's fault. Um, but you don't also know, was he told – Nick is coming with a huge run on the top, you know, leave room. My guess is probably not. Um, but that's just kind of the growing pains of, you know, spotter driver relationship. Anyway, I think that that, it was kind of a clashing of worlds there where, you know, obviously Stuart probably thought, Hey, you know, come on, let's cut me a break here. You're, you're only beside me by a, a couple of feet and it was two feet, but I mean, you can't ask really the guy that went to the top to get a run to stop and check up. So no, no punches thrown, even though the, the picture looked like it, right? Like no, I think there was he just a, got a hold of his collar. I think he just, yeah, just, he shook him. He right. shook him. One thing but, we're learning though, is that Nick Sanchez is not backing down from these veteran truck drivers. I, yeah, nor should he. I, I, I don't know. I, I think that, Crafton at the Dega thing was just mad at him because he raced him hard or something like that. I'm not even really sure. But, I mean, that's <laughs> – say I, I don't know. I haven't seen really where Sanchez has been in the wrong too much yet. So, I, I we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt and give him the nod on was probably in the right in this situation for sure. I think the first thing we need to point out about this Bristol race is what we kind of just mentioned is that it is no longer on dirt. We moved back to the concrete, and I think it's safe to say that that was a a move for the best. I mean, from my perspective, um, you know, this is where you need it. Travis, have uh, on, on the very bottom, all opinions <laughs> from tonight's podcast are strictly biased. Uh, they are not factual. Um you're going to hear it from my point of view. This is sure. under the certain window. It doesn't count, right? Like it's so close to the race still that we can just. Yeah. You know what? 
actually, <laughs> when I got my fine last year from the Phoenix thing, they said it's because you know your podcast was the next day. You had a you know people admit wrecking others. It's it's okay in the moment. Yeah, we started it this was on the same Sunday night. night. <laughs> we're good. So we're good. So so no bleeps, no nothing. Let's just let's just get into this eBay Motors is here for the ride with the parts you need for the prices you want. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. There's a few other things we probably should note, right? Um, I'm just I'm just so excited to talk about what the hell just happened. I mean, it was just, my adrenaline is still pumping. It's midnight, folks. Um, on Denny time down in the basement. So, okay. Uh, you guys got on their Phoenix rating, 4 million viewers, uh, up 20%. Uh, that's really good. Good to see our, our ratings doing well. Um, I think, you know, this was kind of, um, we're riding the wave. Obviously we had some good momentum from Daytona. Atlanta was a, obviously a fantastic finish. Um, then we get into Vegas, thought it was a good race. We didn't know it was going to win to the last lap there. You've got, uh, then we go to Phoenix where, you know, my opinion was, what more do you want? I mean, we had, there was no one that ever pulled away with a lead and we had, we had great passing throughout for the lead. Um, again, it's from my point of view, there's, it's just an opinion and there's many other opinions about that. The uh, door bumper clear guys was like, Phoenix just sucks, and the racing sucked. So we clearly are all over the board and got it covered in every way possible. But I think, generally speaking, we, we've we got some good momentum with the ratings. Now, we are starting to get into, um, this is where you also have to have an asterisk, is that we're getting into the non-Chase Elliott races from last year. So if you remember, the rec- uh, ratings declined 10% on average last year when uh, Chase is not in the race. So we should see a bump regardless um, of that. So, but, but the 20%, that tells me it's 10% better. Right. But right? read the next line, though. No, read the next line. Which one? Is that last year NASCAR had four races with over 4 million viewers during mm-hmm. the entire year? Daytona, Chicago. This year is all four. Talladega, Fontana. And this year, so yep. far, all four have been. Yeah, that's over four million viewers. Yep, and and it's because the races have been compelling. Um, but the, there's also the, been a the, different marketing approach. That's this year, correct. Right? There's also last year Phoenix went up against Selection Sunday. Yeah. This year, I'm I'm be curious to see what the numbers are because this race went up against the Player Championship, which yep. was really good at the yep. end, and Selection Sunday. So if this one's up, you know, then it's that's really good news for NASCAR. Yeah, so so would it be safe to say compare these numbers to what last week's numbers were? Because you're saying that what happened last year happened last week's during last week's race. Correct. It happened this week instead. Yeah. So so we should be up ten percent. Yeah. And if we are, then that's a good thing. Then that's then that cancels out the Chase Elliott um dip. So anyway, it'll be interesting to see. I again I, I log on to social media to I, I I wanted to get a feel for where were the people on this. So I did my media session after the race. We'll get into the race. But after the race, I had had my media session, then had like a little round table discussion with Bob Pachris, Kelly Crandall, and Jordan Bianchi, because I was like, what are the people saying? Like I Maybe we came in here and we just painted a very rosy picture about, man, you know, tire management, the drivers back in the seat, you know, able to really make, you know, the difference. Um, and then, but I, I didn't know whether the drivers were just trashing it or not. I mean, this could go one of two ways, right? You had the indie debacle from many, many years ago where um, the tough part about that is the tires just blew out. Like there was no warning. Um, the difference today was that you had a warning. If they blew out, you did not heed to the warning that they were about to blow out. And what was the warning? So your car would just drop grip, 
dramatically. And in my mind, um, I guess I'll go into it. It's, I was very fortunate to blow a tire in the first stage at the very end. I was leading with six to go in the first stage. I finished 15th. That is crazy. So what happened is with six to go, all of a sudden my, my car was like, holy shit, the right rear is falling off. Like it, it was just, I had no grip at all. So I was going into the corner, just wrecking, just spinning out. Well, there's six to go left in the stage. So I, I need to limp it around. And I tried to limp it. And I found that I really got two more laps out of the car and then it blew. So that's where I think I was very fortunate to understand, okay, that's my gas light. But that doesn't you sound... Know, it, that's in the car that, hey, you're getting low on fuel. When I noticed my car, the light switch, I think Kevin Harvick killed it today. I rewatched the race as quick as I could. He killed it in explaining the light switch going off. And it was. It was like you had grip, and then all of a sudden, when your tires hit cords, nothing. You had nothing, and you had to just slow way, way down to not wreck. So if there were blown tires, it's because you ignored the warning of, of that it was giving you. Right, but that doesn't to me to the, you know the 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 race fan that doesn't know much of anything about these tires. Is that sounds to me like when you get that warning, you're at the end of the tire's life. Yes, it's 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 so about is it, to go to air. Is there is there something though earlier that you're sensing like okay, I'm running these too hard, I need to back it down earlier. You know, then the you two don't lap know warning. you don't know until right then, like right when it happens now. As a driver, you know when you're pushing it, you know, and, and just F, FYI, I really wasn't saving much that first stage when I, um, cause I didn't know what, I had no indication tires were going to wear out until mine actually wore out. My, right. I think I was one of the very first to actually drop anchor. Kyle you, you was actually Kyle first. Yeah. Yes. We were the first ones to totally drop anchor and was like, oh, shit, these tires are going to wear out. Reddick didn't give you any sort of idea that, that it might be because after that first Byron gets the caution, Reddick stays out, doesn't take any tires, and then he immediately that was later. Oh, okay, yeah. So that was in between that whole second stage. I think that was second no. stage. I'm not sure. No, I don't know. No, that was no, first. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, no, because he got wrecked. You know, he wasn't just limping around. He he got shuffled out of the lead and wrecked the next corner. So um, that was, I mean, I'll be honest, that was a bit of a head scratcher on, when they stayed out. But they, I never really saw them drop. So it, we were the first, like Kyle and myself. So immediately I'm thinking, okay, I'm just going to run this line up here and save my tires and not push it too hard. But I was still, I could tell, you know, I was still getting after it a little bit, pretty much the whole run. And then six laps to go which is lap 40 on tires, my car just stopped, stopped making corners. And I tried to get to the end of the stage and it blew out, luckily, right when a Kyle Busch spun out. Yep. So it caused a caution. Yeah, we were the first two that gave the warning to the field. Um, you better slow down. Now, why? First of all, was this a surprise, the, the tire wear? No. Well, it was a surprise going into the weekend. Yes. Um, so you had a feeling we from had in practice that this was yes, going to be the case in the race? we had an indication after practice. Um, after 30 laps of practice, the tires were bald. Um, Martin came over to me. Ty came over to me and says, you know, are you, what the hell is going on? Like, this is the weirdest thing. Like, you know, we, we everyone set up their cars to probably be just like they were in the fall or work on them, make them better. And the track was a second slower. It was nuts. I just couldn't believe it. And I'm like, well, maybe it's just that the, the resin just doesn't have grip and there's just no grip down there. And that's why we are, are just so much slower is that we don't have PJ1 this time. Um, but everyone thought, hey, once we get all the cars out there, get some heat going, we're going to rubber in the track, it's going to get better. And it just never rubbered in. 
And so... Well, you said on Saturday at qualifying you thought someone peed in the Goodyear rubber mixture. <laughs> I am more convinced of that now than <laughs> ever. That... I, I had this... I, I have this um, plea to whoever was responsible for the mixture of the Goodyear tires, don't try to cover it up, okay? Whoever's in charge of Goodyear needs to go and say, okay, we're not firing anyone. We just want to know what happened. That, because I believe this could be the biggest teaching moment in the history of NASCAR. Whatever they changed in that chemical mixture. So when they're making rubber, it's they're they're just they're making it right. It's it's a formula of this and that and this and that, and they can put little things in it to make it wear. Now they told me at a te Texas tire test, there's something we can put in it that will accelerate tire wear. Somebody knocked over the bottle <laughs> into the mixture, but I you got to get somebody there to admit or maybe it was just an accident. I don't know, but s we need to find out what was different from that tire in the fall to that tire today. So we're not, we didn't run any of the t last year's tires, right? Those tires were used up and gone. They made a new batch. Goodyear made a new batch of tires at the beginning of this year for this Bristol race. But when they made this mixture, someone peed in it. And it, it, are, are you, is I, that a euphemism for something? Or are you, they, they put something in there that they were not supposed to, or they put too much of something in this mixture okay. that screwed it all up. Okay. <laughs> were you confused the whole weekend when I said someone pee peed in it? I just thought it was something random that you were saying. I'm like, oh, he's, yeah, that's funny, I guess. No, I, I, <laughs> no, I'm just saying we were we were trying to point fingers at it's the resin, it's this, it's that. and it's like, no. There's some they mix there's something with the mixture of this rubber that is not the same as what they brought before. And we need to identify what it is because we just need to put a slightly lower dose. Right. To me it seemed like a happy accident after all. A happy accident. The wait is over, NASCAR fans. FanDuel, America's number one sports book, is officially live in North Carolina. And right now, new customers get $250 in bonus bets guaranteed when you bet your first five bucks. Just go to FanDuel.com backslash Denny to sign up. Then you can bet on everything from individual race winners to prop bets to which driver is going to take home the championship. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Start your engines with $250 in bonus bets when you place your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com backslash Denny to get started. FanDuel, authorized gaming operator of NASCAR. 21 and older and present in North Carolina. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at fanduel.com backslash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. So I have a question, though. So the extra tires that were given were from last year, though. Really? So, uh... Somebody tweeted, wait, the, the 22 has old tires. And Bob said, sounds like the extra set of tires they were given were made last year and not used. Same tire code, just a little, quote, older. Well, that opens up. Because on the radio, they told Logano they're like from last year. Hmm. I'm befuddled. If that is the case then it's a track temperature issue. I, I, I did see that the, tr that the outside temperature of the last two Bristol races were 70 degrees because they were all night races. This is the first time us being back at Bristol in the spring in four years. So it was cooler. Now, I will tell you this. I mean, we're, we're trying to figure this out on the fly here in the middle of this podcast i'm just you got to draw try to draw conclusions of okay well that's not it 
And that's not it. The thing is, is that the middle of the track was untreated. It, it didn't matter if you had PJ1 on it before, resin now. It didn't matter. If you ran the middle of the track, it, it clearly was worse on tire wear. And that was untreated. So let's throw out, it's not the resin. You're, if what you're saying is true, that the extra set of tires, now, here's the only thing. The is 11 it? car never put on the extra set of tires. There might have been some that put on, but I think there was a lot of the field that had another set of tires left. So was were they actually even in use, Travis, is my question. So if we still had cording problems with tires definitely, definitely made for the fall race of last year, then it's a track temperature problem. And what I will tell you is that Martinsville is another concrete track that refuses to take rubber unless it's at least 65 degrees outside. It was 60 today. 70 degrees, that track will be black as asphalt. The tires, it gets hot. The surface gets hot. And it just, and it just, it, it allows the pores of the racetrack to be filled. The reason that the lower line was better on tires is it was filled with all this crap that they've sprayed on it and powdered on it and rubber that we've run on. That's why it was better on tires. You go to the middle lane, it was it was like brand it was like this sheet of paper, just white. So the pores were not filling in. One thing that maybe I have a quote from Greg Stucker. It's the same tire combination from 2023. Obviously, the difference is the resin, he said. That's it. I, I know that's a, again, he's saying that in the the race is still yeah, going they're still on. looking for. Yeah, this was mid race. Man, there's so much to talk about. It, it's OK. But you're but we need to find out were any of the tires manufactured in a different time and place than what the ones we had on this weekend, if, if they were on, if they had older tires, some people put them on, they still wore out. It is a track temperature problem. The track, the tire did not match the track at this correct temperature. Well, that, sh that should be an easy answer to find, right? You just, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure by the time this podcast come, I mean, when this podcast comes out, a team, some teams will say if they did run old tires and they still wore out, they'll say, Hey, um, Yes, we did, and they wore out. So then you have to take away that it's the track because the, the, the center of the track is the same as it always has been. There's never been any resin or PJ1 in the middle of the track. That is a stagnant. The one major change is the temperature. The so, temperature. So how do you replicate that going forward to, to other tracks? How do you take what we had today and maybe dial it back just a little bit and replicate it going forward if it if the variable here is the track temperature, how do you account mm. for that going forward know. as we move into the summer sure. months? I think that if what well, our thesis is, is that it, this was a temperature problem. And hey, how about this? Light going off in the head. Is this, is this on camera when Denny like points his finger Sorry. and he's got this nub Sorry. on it? Sorry. Yeah, we got to get to that at some point too. <laughs> is that the track took a in practice between the first group and the second group. The first group was in, the track was way more in sunlight, way more. The track was much hotter. They, they ran, I saw guys run 40, 50 laps. Now their tires may have been somewhat worn. They were, they were worn, but it was nothing like group two, group two, Definitely had a cooler racetrack, and it was a show because we were all scratching our heads. What the hell is going on? But you would think that the, the rubber's already in the track, but it's a concrete track, and it get, the rubber gets pulled up whenever their car is going slow. The answer is I don't know. I think what I caution, and I know I loved seeing um, Propes's quotes saying that was probably the best short track race that I've ever seen. That makes me like take a breath and say, oh, good. Like at least they're not like, this is unacceptable. We we're going to fix it. 
I'm sure they're not going to not do anything, but the slightest change will take us right back to where we were. I mean, what today proved is that we've complained about horsepower, horsepower, horsepower. The reason we want horsepower, people, is because it creates off-throttle time. It creates an opportunity for the best drivers to go out there and manhandle their car and and change their line and and really be a factor in their finish because it there's more braking more off throttle time more rolling time more cracking the throttle where before we've had and i think chase elliott summed this up perfectly to bob pockris and his media availability just says we've all been forced to drive the same we have no power so we drive in really deep we slam on the brakes, then we slam back on the gas. And since we have no power, we have to run right around the bottom, and no one's able to venture anywhere else because that's just the shortest distance. And that's the box we've been put in, is to just be all the same. If you create bigger horsepower, then you've got these, you wear the tires out. And when you wear the tires out, you see cars that are two seconds slower than others. So this may be a little simpler change than the horsepower because they asked me in media, do you need horsepower now? I said, not, not if we had the tire we had today. No, <laughs> you, you didn't want to hit touch the gas. So it, it's just, it's a riddle where it's, it's proving, it's definitely proving what the drivers have been asking for, which is more off throttle time. We've been, I've been in the sport for 20 years. We keep asking for it. They keep reducing the off-throttle time, and the passing becomes more and more difficult. But that is because in the head offices down in Daytona, in the headquarters, they want more cars to be on the screen at one time. They want you to believe that that car could pass that car. They don't care if they actually do. They just want their you to be on the edge of your seat of, Maybe you'll get them. Maybe you won't. I've definitely been told that, that they just want more cars on the screen. I know. I know. Jared, I get it. No, I was just going to say, did they watch today's race? Because there were multiple times during this race where so-and-so had asked me, like, oh, do you think this guy's going to win? It's like, who? I don't know. I just saw that guy lead the race for 10 <laughs> laps and then drop to eighth. And then that guy, Denny, crash and then go back to 30th and then drive to eighth. You have no idea who's going to win. No idea. And even, you know, watching the race back, and I'm sitting there thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm going to blow the tires off this thing. I was watching myself go through the go through the lap cars, and I'm like, God dang, you know, I'm just driving way more aggressively than everyone else. But it just hung on. It, it hung on. Right, you could watch and we those didn't last know, 50 we laps. we didn't know, is the 11's light switch going to go off like a light and then the 19? But I think at the end of the race, if you look at our lap times, they dropped like a rock the last four laps. Our cars went, turned off, as Kevin Harvick says, the same lap. They turned off together. So as I was slowing down, he was slowing down too because we had nothing left. But it was, it was crazy. It was so crazy. Um, so I have a question. You, you talk about they might change the tire but couldn't they leave the tire the same knowing that the teams now have this information mm -hmm. and will adjust? So keep the tire the same and let the teams do what they do best. Yes. These teams are smarter than the, the people that put on the race and probably the people that build the tires. They figure it out. They will. They would come back with different setups. The drivers would have different mentalities. They would know. Hey, my gas light's coming on. I got a pit. Well, you saw that from, from stage one to the end of the race, right? You cut a tire in stage one, and you didn't cut a tire the rest of the day. So clearly well, you learned something from that. I your did, team learned something but I that. listened to the warning, or I felt the warning the car gave me. Is, and that is when, the, when it stopped gripping the racetrack, I came on the radio, told my crew chief, I'm out of time. I'm going to blow one. He says, all right, come now. So... We, we, we listened to the warnings it was giving us, and we didn't put ourselves in that super bad spot. Right. But you, I think what Travis is getting at is, is you learned off of that from one time, right? You didn't need to go through it more than once. Yeah. Once was enough for you to learn that, hey, this is yes. what we have to do. I, if, if, you, if the car stayed in Bristol tonight and they told the teams, you're free to change whatever you want, we're going to run another, we're going to run 100 laps tomorrow. 
they would they would make it a long time. I, I don't know how long if it was fifty laps was seemed like the the number where you just couldn't go any further than fifty uh, today. It would be eighty tomorrow. I mean, it would it because the teams will get in their simulations and they'll figure it out and say, okay, we're gonna adjust this, we're gonna adjust that. Uh, the pace is different. Let's do this. Let's do that. And the drivers are going to say, okay, I can't go balls out right from the get-go. i got to manage. It, they're just, it would just naturally fix itself. Naturally. What I want to know, though, now is that we saw this, this Bristol product. We saw this great product at Bristol. To me, it seems like there's two ways to recreate this going forward. Either you have the perfect tire compound, like you had as a happy accident today, more or less, or you add more horsepower to the car. Which one well likely the, leads like to like even if they added say a hundred horsepower to the car, um, you wouldn't see what you saw today. Like in normal conditions. Right. It wasn't gonna wear the tires out that much. Um it would at a Martinsville, uh Richmond's, things like that. It would improve the racing at all those tracks. Um and when we advocate or when I personally advocate for more horsepower, I, I'm saying leave the mile and a half stuff alone if you want. If you want to add some there great if not that's okay too um but it's the short tracks the short tracks have needed work uh with this next gen and it's no secret it's because we have a bigger tire and we have less horsepower than we've ever had and we have shifting and they're just never going to create an aerodynamic package that is going to fix the short tracks you have to do it with grip on the tire or you have to do it with horsepower in the engine and today made that case Signed, sealed, delivered. That is the reason why. But we left last week's episode, and you were hammering on the horsepower front. Mm -hmm. And the first 100 laps of this race, I'm watching it being like, oh, boy. Because we've been We're asking Goodyear for a, a billion years to wear the tires out. Right. We finally got it. Right. I'm watching this race, and I'm thinking, okay, uh, when we record this podcast, it's going to be all about, that's why we need more horsepower. That's why we need more horsepower, which is you know, still the it's case. It's one or the but, other. Yes. Yes. But now are you more confident that, that you can recreate this tire compound that you don't know because we power? can't even figure out right now what the hell happened. We don't know. I, I was convinced that it was a somebody, one of the chemists messed up the mixture. I was convinced of that on Saturday. As soon as I drove, came in, drove again, some this, this tire is not the same. It's definitely not the same. But you guys are telling me, and I'm using your words, that someone else put on tires manufactured last year, and they wore out. And if that's the case, then there's cl it's a clearly a track temperature thing that made this happen. The one thing we don't know, though, is Lagana put those tires on. We don't know who else or and or if those tires wore out. Well, yeah, we yeah. don't. We don't know. Um, How close were you to blowing a tire in that gr that last green flag caution? Did your did your like mental light go on that you got to go pit now? Uh, the green flag uh, when everyone was pitting under green. Yeah, the last one. Yes, I I I was able to go a longer distance than others. I'd managed my tires to a certain degree. I knew that we had X amount of laps in the race. If I divide that into two, how long do I need to go on tires? I managed it off of that. When I saw others really struggling much quicker than what I was, and I still was maintaining pace. I'm like, oh, this is a good thing. That will allow me to go longer to then shorten up my last run. And that may, that way I can be more aggressive in the last run. But I I'd went all the way until my right front had no rubber left on it. And I said, I have to pit. And he says, okay, see you in a minute. <laughs> so, I mean, that's pretty much how it went, is that I made sure that – um uh, we pitted and didn't roll around the racetrack half speed for three laps. Uh, once we had one corner where we were off off speed, we just pitted right away. But we did that because others had already started pitting. The reason that others, you know, these drivers and these teams, they don't want to stay out there running quarter speed, you know, 20 second laps, but they don't want to pit and then a caution come out for someone else who stays out. So everyone's trying not to be the first to pit road. They're just like, Okay, somebody please blow a tire so we can so we can salvage this, and I don't have to come to pit road to lose two laps. So everyone was actually probably pretty happy that that green flag cycle actually happened 
Were you surprised at that green flag cycle Very, happen? Because right. dodging cars out there, it was crazy. You're thinking there's 40 of us out here. Surely. Surely someone. But NASCAR was awesome job letting the race go. There was no there was no need for a caution. There was yes, there were slow cars up at the wall and yeah. down here. But there was no reason to throw a caution. And they didn't, and it led to a great finish of you know, between us and the nineteen of who's who's gonna last here. Yeah, well you heard on your radio multiple times, you know, car this, car that, still green, still green, yeah. still green. Yeah. And it was just never, hey, caution's out. Thank goodness, <laughs> for sure. But I mean, we were in a good spot. I think we had enough. Even if we had a, a short sprint, I liked I liked my car, you know, from lap one to lap fifty, whenever it was, however long I could go. Um, but really, I mean, I, I just hope that we use this as a learning moment and we apply this somehow to other short tracks because I think it is just absolute can be an absolute game changer to uh, get. NASCAR, you are not going to fix the short tracks with aerodynamics. Stop it. Stop it. It's either horsepower or tires. You have to do one or the other. Well, we go to Richmond next week. How? Two weeks. Two weeks. Go to next week. Richmond the week after that. <laughs> I feel like you're going to go to that short track now expecting to have similar <laughs> results to what you had today. We're not. Um, I think that's a diff- it's a different tire, I believe. Um, so we're not. It's still going to be a tire wear thing. You're going to hear a lot about can't pass just because we're, it's just, you just run barely fast enough there to where aerodynamics does matter a little bit. Um, but man, holy, <laughs> it's just, my mind is just running now of like, how, how can we use this to be better in the long run? Like, this was a happy mistake. What was uh, going through your mind there? I think uh, 13 Truex passes you, and then you kind of gave Bub a little, uh, hello, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, get out of the way. Um, yeah, I mean, he was multiple laps down at the time anyway, and I I mean, I, it's a really crucial part of the race, and I actually had a corner where I thought my right front was out of grip. Um, I missed the bottom in turn three. Truex got beside me, and my car went dead straight. And when it went dead straight, I'm like, Oh crap. Like that's not good. It's it's we're, we're going to have major issues and we're not even 10 laps to go in this race. So there's no way I'm going to make it. Well, I go in the next corner, I'm like, "Oh, well, I do have grip." Okay, who? That scared me because the the 19 went around me and at that point I'm like, "Okay, there's 10 to go. I still can't get crazy by pushing it." So I just was like, "I'm just going to ship it here on the outside. There's clearly cars on the bottom of the racetrack that are bottling things up and I just wanted to roll the outside I knew that yes I'm gonna wear out tires but like it's this is for the win and and I've got to go and the 19 he was trying to go but we kept getting jammed up on the bottom so I decided to just go middle there the 23 was in my way I had to get had to get him out of there and there was somebody else as well that was like I hit him down the straightaway to let him know like hey there's two cars racing side by side for the lead here I don't know how many laps you are down but get the hell out of the way so it was um it was it was a crazy fun race. I mean, it's again, you're gonna hear it from my perspective, and I and I read a lot of the driver's quotes as well. It looks like even the guys that did not have good races were like, I mean, it was fun. <laughs> He's like, you know, if we had to do this all over again, we would certainly do a lot of things different to change our result. But man, that was different. And so I, I just enjoyed um, all the teams, all the drivers getting thrown a loop like that. That was just, that was just crazy. When you're leading Truex, are you like, what's your mindset in, in that moment? Are you knowing that he's going to have to drive hard to pass you? Right. And that these tires only yeah. have so much. Are, are you like baiting him into driving harder? Some, or? Yeah. Yes. So, somewhat, but you're not going to trick Martin. I mean, he's just too good. Uh, you're not going to trick him into, you know, doing something he he knows. He's too disciplined to fall into that trap. So I think at that point, I wasn't really playing any games with him. I was just trying to run the best lap I possibly could each lap while saving tires. And there is an art to it. Uh, I'm not going to tell you, you know, how 
I manage lap time and tire management because there's certain things that you can do inside the car that you absolutely can still make good lap time while, um, by, while being easy on the tires. Uh, but that's just, um, yeah, it's, he's, he's good at it. Obviously Brad, he finished third. I mean, he had the three oldest guys run one, two, three. There's probably not, uh, you know, that's not a coincidence. How did you see other guys, the lap traffic racing you at the end of the race? It was fine. I mean, everyone's just trying to manage their own race. It was the, it was one of the very few, it was almost like Darlington where everyone's just kind of racing the track. Now this is back when the old Darlington before they repaved it, but it was, you're racing the track. You really were. You, you just were just trying to hold your line, you know, not get past, but run fast enough to stay in front, but not wear out your tires. And then whoever wanted to make passes would just go to the high line, make a pass and then try to get down low again. Um, it was a chess game. It really was for 500 laps. Were you worried at any point when you, the few times that you were in the back and you made your runs get up front that you were going to be pushing a little too hard and you were going to get there? Or did you feel comfortable enough? After I blew through the tires in the first stage, I had a pretty good indication of what I did wrong that I could correct for the rest of the race that would make me not wear those tires out. So um, the, the, the kind of the adjustments I made as a driver, I was confident that I could still, I had no worries about, you know, restarting 30th there in the second stage and making it back to the front. Like I, it, I knew that we were good enough to do that so for when, sure. So when they said that they were going to give the extra set of tires, were you kind of like, you guys didn't use it. Were you kind of like, I hope they don't give them out. No, because you don't want to see it get too crazy. We're all running out there, you know, wrecking. I mean, literally we were running three seconds off the pace um, at the end of these races compared to what we usually run it at Bristol. I mean, even on TV, I could see like, wow, we are creeping around the racetrack, but um, no, they needed to give us the extra tires for sure. I mean, they, they kind of um, managed it out and saw that, okay, we, we feel like if we can get these guys to go 50 laps on a set of tires, then that's a, probably a good, good barometer uh, or, or base to go off of. And they, they added the tires accordingly. Now we, again, we still had another set left, but uh, we also chose to not take tires, new tires at uh, the end of the second stage. So we had an extra set anyway. How much of this race win is a credit to you managing the tires versus your car just being really good? And I ask that because I feel like in the majority of races you watch, you can kind of tell, oh, you know, that guy's got a really good car, right? He's going to drive yep. to the field. He's got a great car. But in this one now, you watch it back. It's like, well, you know, your car was obviously was yeah. good. But, like, how much is a credit to well, the tire it's, management? It's, you know, I, I think it's 50-50 because if, if the balance is off on my car, it's going to wear one, one of the tires more, the right front or the right rear, depending on the balance. My car was very well balanced. So it it, whenever you have a car that's, say it's pushing right so the right front it, it's not turning that tires taking more of the brunt of trying to make the corner than the other so it, it will wear out faster mine being evenly balanced it it made the load of the right front and the right rear the same therefore they wore about the same and what i liked seeing was on that green flag pit stop that i came in with 50 to go the cords on the right front and the right rear looked the same Right. So it was that's a good balanced car that was not one side was worn more than the other. Is it safe to say now that the Toyotas are just going to perform very well at short tracks this year? I mean, that's jumping the gun a little bit for sure, because this race was certainly an anomaly. Um, I mean, you can't again, we you cannot ignore the fact that, you know, the Gibbs cars were up front for the bulk of the day. Um, Seabell, you know, lost his tires late in the late in the race. Ty Gibbs, same thing. Uh, they just pushed it too hard, too early. Um, but they were all learning moments for everyone. Everyone is thinking about, if I had to do this again, what would I do differently? But um, certainly it's not all driver because you've got my teammates that were, were certainly up there as well. I think also you said gay part with the call on taking tires when like the first pit stop, you lost two stop, uh, spots and you took four tires compared to people taking two. And your pit crew was nine oh nine on the first stop and nine point one nine. I know on the second one. Yeah, there. 
my team is just on it when it comes to that right now. We're in a really, really good place. As long as I continue to do a, a, a decent job, you know, I think that we can win a lot of races um, this year. We obviously, you know, counting the clash, got two wins now in the first six. Um, you know, I I said to many friends and family, this is this will be a big year for us. Today's race at Bristol had a track record fifty four lead changes. You always That's like commenting crazy on number. this. So I you, <laughs> you know what the bad thing is? It was pretty much legit. It wasn't because there was crazy amount of green flag um uh green flag uh pit cycles that that you know where people stay out. Now you had, you know, probably three or four leaders change hands when during the during the cycles of the green flag run, but a lot of it was just cat and mouse. This guy, this guy, this guy, you know. And at one point of the race, they mentioned it on TV. They actually mentioned it was Ty, it was actually Kyle Larson. We were side by side for the lead. I, they didn't show much of it, but I came on the radio and said, "Go to Kyle Larson's spotter and ask him: Is he good? Just blocking the track here. Let's just run side by side, really slow, and keep everyone <laughs> stacked up behind us." And uh, my spotter says his that his spotter gave us the nod on, "Yeah, we're good doing that." Well, he was on the bottom. He was in the better better lane, and eventually, I wore my stuff out uh, running up that up running up the racetrack. But it was fun uh, us just kind of running really slow, side by side, doing the Mike Ford um, st <laughs> stat passes. But I knew it was going to be a crazy number of passes. Uh, no telling how many green flag passes that that race had. Um, it just. I, it, we just we've never seen anything like this N not not in my day why were there so many lead changes though because if you get out to the lead and until you hit lap traffic you have your choice of the lane you want to run right because because the leader sets a, a pace in which he likes to run and he feels comfortable so many times during that race if i led and i had ty gibbs behind me he was beating my rear bumper off and i'm just like well go if you want to go go right ahead and he'd blow by me on the outside and then he'd go and then I'd watch him and I'd watch him and I'm like it's just a matter of time so <laughs> so the lead changes were weren't necessarily because the you know the car behind you is passing you is better it's more of a it's, strategic it's, play yeah I mean I I like to control the race from the front I don't want to be second or right. third but I was not willing to run the pace which he was forcing me to run. But what about other guys during the race? For instance, early in the race, you see Chase Elliott drive from fourth to the lead and then five laps later drops back to fourth. During that short stint of those four or five laps that he made the charge to the front, he wore the tires out too much. He, he might have slipped them two, two hard times and that was it. They were done. Was that you being strategic? When it was Gibbs, one, two, three, four, you were first and then dropped out and you are you got passed and you pop back in at third I just I just wanted to run a certain pace that that was all I mean there was not really my position I thought was irrelevant at the time um sure I would have loved to have the lead but I just I didn't care really I, I just was about pace that's all it was about for me was pace and feel don't wear out the tires do what I need to do to make speed driving this certain way and still saving tires. And that's, that's what paid off for me in the long run. You didn't have any famous sound bites after this one. I didn't No, Um, I thought that the, the fans had mixed reviews. I wouldn't say that they were apparently, overwhelming. Apparently they booed everybody at introductions according yeah. to Twitter. Whereas the Tennessee fans just like grumpy. Elliot got booed. Like apparently like Kendrick drivers got booed today. Hmm. Made, Tennessee woke up, chose violence, I guess. I don't know. Um, I, I, yeah, I just, it was fine. You know, I'm still adhering to my dad's wishes of not saying it. So um, I was fine just kind of, you know, reminding them, number one. I was hoping you'd cut a new one. promo. I know, I know. And that's what probably wish me too. too also, but. For another day, it ain't going to be our last win, I can tell you that. We did have a little drama, though, out there today. Where? Uh, Blaney does not want to be asked about Ross Chastain right now. 
Why? He was asked because they uh, Frost got into him today a little bit. He was asked about it, and Blaney says, "I'm tired of you asking me Ross questions. No, thank you." And then walked off. Hmm. So is he mad at the reporter, or is he mad that Ross got into him again? I wonder. I'd, I'd say yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I, I I came over the radio at one point today, or yeah, one point today, and was like, "Tell Blaney, like, it's got to give me a little room, like." Um, I was fine letting him go, but he just coming off the corner wasn't giving me much room, and we kept making contact. I'm like, "Hey, man, I don't want to spin that. I don't want to spin him out, but he does know I'm on the inside, right?" So we just kept cutting down on the left rear, and we kept I kept knocking him up the track because he kept coming down the bottom lane when I was there. And um, but I mean, those were two guys that fight hard for every inch. So you're you're gonna you're probably gonna have that. That drama, those two. that drama is ongoing, but it seems like the Eric Jones, Chase Briscoe drama has reached its conclusion. Yeah. Once they got <laughs> say, <laughs> the proper numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently Chase Briscoe got a new number. Eric Jones got a new number. One, one of, of the two. One of the two got a new number. That the other one did not have. Mm. All you right. You should check that. Make sure that you got both their numbers. I, I, I did. I got one from Josh Berry today. I, it was an unknown number. It says, hey, this is Josh. Got your number from Dale. My aunt's sorry about getting in. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, man, we're all good. Good job this weekend. <laughs> it's after a win. You're like, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. We're good. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, no, I, hey, let's give props to Josh Berry. He had a good weekend. Um, qualified well. Ran up towards the front. Uh, he was one of the unfortunate guys that had to pit like the earliest in that last green flag sequence. So he had, I think he had to go like 70 laps on tires or something crazy. Those, those what are, are you people doing here? We have a, I didn't realize we have an audience here. And Ron, where did you get marshmallows? Oh, he raids my marshmallows. He goes in my pantry and eats all my big marshmallows. All right. Well, let's wrap this up so we can proceed. Yeah. We got, um, we got some more notes down here at the bottom. I know we got notes. What did you think of uh, of the Trackside Live today? <laughs> it was good. It was a lot of people. I mean, they have Kenny Wallace and uh, John Roberts doing it. They used to do the old Speed Channel Trackside Live on, like, Friday nights at the racetrack. Um, they rile up the fans. It's great. I mean, Kenny, I'm a huge Kenny Wallace fan. I listen to his stuff. He's got a great um, Kenny Wallace show on YouTube as well. Uh, you can tune in and listen to his reactions here and there. Uh, but he's, uh, yeah, he does a great job getting the crowd going. And, and I thought that, uh, it was one of the more interesting, I think that Q and a went about like the race did just totally off the rails. Um, we found the guy who threw the cucumber at me, um, last fall. At least fall. you found a guy who claimed that he was the guy that threw the cucumber Yes, because at he says he's in the back. He's got a Kyle Larson hat on, Kyle Larson shirt on, and he's got two cucumbers and he's holding them up and... They're like, wait a minute, who is that? And the guy runs to the front, and he's like, I, just set the record straight. I wasn't throwing it at you. But here's his story. His story is that he was giving me the cucumbers. He says, because what do you get when you win? I said, a checkered flag. He said, what else? I says, he's like, a sword. You get a sword. I was giving you cucumbers so you could dice them up and I says this sounds like a person trying not to incriminate themselves and get them kicked out of this race um but evidently he came bearing two new cucumbers and he said he would throw them again and now it's a thing with Bristol they they had me dicing up cucumbers in the middle of victory lane is that how you cut yourself it's not and it's gonna be funny because I it's it's not funny but yeah, this thing. I just grabbed the, something in the car wrong when I was getting out. And oh, is it true that um, you did it again today at the race? Oh, absolutely! It felt amazing. <laughs> I mean, what I liked about it is that the car wasn't stopped. I was able to do it under caution. But I'm not kidding you. It went from the beginning of the caution to the end. I just kept going. Hold up. How did you know that? I've got this? sources. Yeah. Am I not allowed to have them? No, I'm just... I think Andrew might have been eavesdropping in Victory Lane. That's possible. Yeah. So, all right. Do um, you got anything else you want to 
I've got a couple that deer, we should get into. I got a couple of deer Denny's here for you. Okay. First one. What's the feeling being in Victory Lane celebrating with your daughters or tonight your daughter? <laughs> yeah, there's only one. Jordan and Taylor uh, went up to New York for a uh, girls' weekend. Uh, they're visiting a, just a couple cool spots, and they want to do that for spring break. So it's me and Molly's weekend together, and we, um, yeah, it was cool with her. She was just, she's just so good. Um, it, she's really good by herself. <laughs> you know, when she has the influence of Taylor, she gets a little skewed sometimes. Uh, and she loves her mom so much. You know, she gets a little whiny around mom, but man, when it's just us, she's, she's amazing. So she was she really happy. The, uh, we didn't quite catch a leprechaun. She was really adamant on catching a leprechaun. So she built a leprechaun trap. We took it to the racetrack and we didn't catch one there, but the leprechaun did leave us some gold trails that I said maybe was um, clues that there would be more at the house. So when they came back to the house, the leprechaun clearly came to my house because he, he did a lot of mischief things in the bathroom and in the kitchen. And he left her a little gift basket saying, sorry, I missed you. You were in Bristol, but maybe you'll catch me next time. Maybe he's the reason for the win. Irish luck. It was um, a lucky day. I, I, it was a lucky day. Yep. Well, um, I don't have anything else. Make sure, hey, by the way, folks, if you don't mind uh, rating and reviewing and following wherever you get your podcast, we'd really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is growing rapidly. So thank you for tuning in to that. Um, Review from Everett Thomas here. They say, I've been a Chase fan since I've started and hated Denny, but this show has converted me. That reminds me of a, um, I think it was a quote tweet or maybe an Instagram comment I saw tonight or someone and said, man, I miss the old days. It felt like just six months ago, Denny would get out of the car. Everyone would boo him, maybe throw a vegetable or two. (laughs) Yeah, it was. I was, I'd be lying if I wasn't thinking during my cool down lap, like, how am I going to provoke these fans? How am I going to just dig into them a little bit? But I just, I just felt happy. I just felt happy today. So um, certainly a rewarding win. I mentioned in the media center that I, um, I this, I, I can't think of another win recently that I felt this much a part of. Is that because, because of the tire management? Because of the role that I had to have um, in the, in the result. Uh, so. Who knows if we'll ever have this again. I think the odds are stacked against us. There's always a reaction uh, whenever something like this happens. Um, but just try to get Goodyear and NASCAR to just take a breath here, um, figure out what happened, and uh, naturally the teams will come back better next time if nothing changes at all. So uh, I think it being a fall, uh, the summer race, or you know, towards it's in September, right, that this race is, um, I, it's going to be warmer. I think it's going to be warmer than what it was here. So it naturally, I think will get better. So we'll see what they do. Uh, hopefully nothing, um, or maybe just tweak it slightly. Uh, but how can we bring this to the other short tracks? It would save, it would absolutely say we would be done talking about packages and horsepower if they had this kind of tired every short track. September 21st. Yeah, so it, it's going to be warmer. Does this though? Does this require testing at different tracks to recreate this, or now that you know? If they know what they did, I'm not convinced that they know what they did. Hmm. So, you're going to have to. Upper management of Goodyear will have to go to all the employees and say, "You're not in trouble, but I need to know the truth. <laughs> what happened? In fact, that, you should probably get a raise. I should probably give yes, you a raise. Yes. Finder's fee, five hundred dollars for anyone with a tip or clue to tell us what just happened this weekend. Speaking of, we never addressed that on the podcast that you did find the trophy from the Milwaukee Mile of that Xfinity race. Win. I did. Yep. We we said that there was a finder's fee on the podcast, and we never addressed that you did find that trophy. We did. It was given to me. Evidently, it was at the headquarters of Rockwell Automation, who was my sponsor back in Xfinity back in the day. They had it at their headquarters. So case closed. Done. And they're rich. I'm not giving them no money. 
<laughs> All right. Well, we'll see y'all next weekend after Coda. Uh, let's keep this big mo going.